Pretty funny what just happened. I, uh, I just talked to you for like two minutes and then realized that the mics were not plugged in. I was starting the previous video by saying, I'm a little tired. Apparently, I'm too tired. But not tired enough, right? We can always work harder. Um, what I was explaining is I've been neglecting electric guitar. I've been playing too much uh, finger style. I don't know if you can say too much, but I've been playing mostly finger style and classical stuff. And um, I went to play some electric and I was sucking balls. That's really the short version of the story. And so I'm turning this on because I know Tom Quayle is a monster. Nick Jennison, I don't know. Never heard of him, but uh, I can only imagine he's frightening. What else would he be in this video? So yeah, we're here for inspiration. I'm here. I don't know what you're here for. I don't know. I'm here to be inspired by their playing and to realize how limited my musical vocabulary is on the electric. Can we go now? Is all my shit actually working? Let's go. Keeping it straight blues for right now. There's some nice chromaticism. Excellent. All right, Quail, are you next? I'm gonna take a guess at what's happening here. Cause like if you play guitar, you've been you've been in jam sessions a bazillion times, right? So I think they're both doing of course they they sound phenomenal, right? But they're both doing two amazingly good things. One is actually structuring the arc of their solos, right? They're starting subtle and building, you know, increased uh dynamic range, a little faster stuff. Um, and making like a, a climax to their solo and they're putting in dashes of chromaticism and what's nuts is they're both so damn good it sounds like they're 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 doing that while holding back so that way as they take turns i bet their solos are just going to get more and more preposterous uh i know tom will go crazy with chromaticism well i know in the past videos i don't know if he will in here but i can only assume right they're just going to go Leave room for growth like a movie. Already. Good.
Yeah, hell yeah! Always do the little dive bar. Um, so for practicing those runs where all of a sudden he's speeding up, right? Um, to me, the actual musicality behind that is really similar to, to me, they're very similar, but they might sound dissimilar to you old jazz bebop or country bluegrass. That really it's taking the same idea of filling in all the phrases with. Consistent notes, um, be them triplets or sixteenths or whatever, right? Um, and it's just doing it in a fusion minor blues style. And the recipe to that is the strong and weak beats and where the notes fall within the measure. So ideally, you want chord tones or extensions of chords to be, like if you're playing sixteenth notes, on notes one and three, on the one and the and, and then you put chromatic passing tones in between those, right? Um, at least that's definitely how bluegrass and stuff works. So it's just nuts because even knowing that, right? Like if I say, oh, how you build a house, right? You put a foundation and you make walls and you and a roof and you run electricity and plumbing. Okay, yeah, but build a house. So like even though logically I get what is what's going on. I still have to fill in the gaps, which is like why I'm here studying. Like, I'm just talking to you because if I don't talk to you, then this is going to be boring. But yeah. So, notice just the difference in their phrasing. So far, Nick has all these lines where he bends, and the bend is not the end of a, of a line. It's kind of a midpoint. So he bends, and then he may, as he releases the bend, like do like chromatic plus, and he's like, he has these bends, and then instead of ending the line or taking a break, a lot of guitarists, right, you bend and you hold it, and that's the end of your small phrase, or you hold it, and then you start another run. He's that's the midpoint of his of his sentence. And as he really as he's bending the note, he propels into another line from there.
Nate's adjustment to the core changes. Play with your fingers, son. Back to the pick. He was holding back. What? Oh, dude, okay, I gotta hear more of Nick Jensen because he was holding back. He was killing it and holding back. Um, I got what I wanted, which is I wanted to like hear some cool ideas. Uh, and I'll just talk for a second. You probably don't, you know, if you don't give a shit, it's cool, you know. You know what to do. Leave, go check out another video. Um, but just like something, so when you're improvising over chord changes, and no, I don't have shit set up, so like. I'm not gonna demonstrate, sorry. Um, I'm gonna have my, what I said I don't have a shit set up is like, in order for me to talk about uh, scale substitutions, I need to have a backing track so you can hear what the substitutions sound like. And I just don't have it set up to uh, do it easily, so sorry. But let, let's give a really simple example. Um, I was jamming on a blues G minor backing track today, which is why I picked a minor uh, session with some badasses. So let's take those those first those well the two primary chords right the one and the four on a G minor progression. So you go from G minor to your C minor chord, right? I guess you could have a C seven. I mean, why not? You, know, you can always dominate shit up if you want to. But okay, so you have two really clear choices, right? The clearest and easiest choice is you just play G minor blues over both chords because it will fit completely fine. Okay, now your second easy choice is you shift from G minor blues to C minor blues on the C minor chord. So you play G minor over the G minor, and then you shift to C minor on the C minor, but you have to leave your C minor in time because C minor blues sounds like dog shit on top of the G minor. Okay, but how about using a, uh, a scale that is an extension of both, right? So what I was playing was actually D minor, and you can play D minor, is it straight blues? No, D, F, E, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's just straight, straight D minor. And then your D minor works on top of the G minor chord because Think about your arpeggio, right? Your arpeggio of a D minor chord, your DFA, right? DFA is an extension of the G minor chord. It's the five, seven, nine, right? And on top of the C chord, it's nine, 11, 13. So it's a little further out there all over the C minor, but you can actually take one chord, and, uh, one scale that is not either chord, and overlay it. And it will get, when you are playing, so as good, most guitarists, I don't know how you play, but most guitarists, right, when we play a scale, we end up hanging out on, on chord tones. Roots, fifths, thirds, primarily. You know, maybe some sevens. Um, and so what's nice is when you overlay a chord, uh, you take an extension of a chord. When I say chord extensions, I mean like sevens, nines, elevens, thirteens, right? And so when you play the D minor-ish chord, when you play, say, the third and the fifth, F and A, over your G chord, it's gonna sound delicious because that is the seven and the nine that you're hanging on, right? So like, without really changing too much of your tendencies, mechanically, you end up emphasizing notes that are more interesting. 
I can't really demonstrate it, right? Because if I if I just take if I just take a thing and I'm like, oh, let's play some. You can't hear what it sounds like over the chord structure. But I'm doing that. I'm doing that in the place where I would play it normally a G blue scale. Right? Shift to D minor. Now, I'm sliding up here as if I'm playing D minor. But when I actually slide up, that's the G for the actual chord. I hope that makes sense. It might not make sense at all. Let's make it, if you've managed to survive all this, really simple thing, take a G minor blues progression and actually play D minor over the chords and see what you get. Now, of course, if you have a D, if you have a D7 for your five chord, you'll need to make your F into an F sharp, or at least include an F sharp. You could treat an F as a sharp nine. I'm saying too much. I'm trying to, I'm not trying to fucking sound fancy. It's just like the only way we have to talk about stuff. So let me get out of here. I'm out.